Hey everybody, this is Alyssa with WDW Bound and we are coming in again with another Disney DIY. We haven't done one of these in a while, um, but I just kind of got, you know, just a hankering for uh, some long lost flower and garden candied strawberries. So that's what we're gonna do today. I went over the weekend and got some fresh strawberries. It is strawberry season here. And so I got some local strawberries. They are beautiful. And so I've already prepped them. I have washed them, dried them, and then cut off the stems because what I'm going to do is use skewers to make this recipe a little bit easier to do. So if you're not exactly sure what candied strawberries are, it's kind of I mean, sort of self-explanatory. Um, they haven't had it in a couple years, but it used to be one of the most popular recipes at Flower and Garden in Epcot. And it's essentially just what it is. It's fresh strawberries dipped in uh, sugar, uh, hardened sugar. It's like, you know, a candied apple, basically like that, and topped with some sesame seeds. And it is just perfect because you've got the sweetness of the strawberry and then the crunch of the sugar it's wonderful so I had a plethora of strawberries and I was like why not let's try it <laughs> so that's what we're gonna do today so let's get started all right so I'll show you my ingredients list um like I said you can't do it without strawberries so I've already prepped those it is also two cups of granulated white sugar. I'm using bamboo skewers. These are kind of the mid-range size. You can get the really long ones or the really short ones. I'm at medium because I'm gonna probably do one, maybe two strawberries at a time. And then I've got just some regular old sesame seeds. And then that is half a cup of light corn syrup and then a half a cup of water. And I will already, I will, you know, eventually combine to add it to this pot here. And this one is a copper bottom. I don't know if you can see that or not. I think those heat just a little bit better. And then I'll be using a candy thermometer to make sure that this gets to the hard crack stage of the uh, cooking process. All right, so I have combined the water, corn syrup, and the white sugar into my pot. And I've got my candy thermometer all set up and I have added it to medium heat. And then I am looking for a temperature of 300. You'll see up at the top, it also, since this is a candy thermometer, it's kind of helpful. It'll tell you what the hard crack stage is, which is 300 degrees. So I'm going to just let this rise to temperature. I will st stir it occasionally, but I'm looking for that 30, 300, not 30, 300 degree temperature to get to that nice hard crack consistency. All right, so this is what you don't do. Um, I walked away from the sugar and this is what happened. It got way too hot. It got up to 340. So, don't be a dingus like me and walk away from the sugar. All right, so it is many days later <laughs> from the mishap. So we are going to try again on the making of the candy again. So again, reiterate, please do not make the same mistake that I did. I essentially made burnt hard candy and almost ruined the pot that I used to make it in. So I do not advise walking away from the, <laughs> from the kitchen while you're cooking this. Pay close attention to that thermometer because if it gets too high, uh, it can get out of control very, very quickly. So just a word uh, to the wise on that regard. Learn from my mistakes. All right, so this is round two. I'm not gonna do a time lapse this time. I'll just show you periodically kind of checking in. So I've started it. This is the same recipe that I did before. This is just take number two. Uh, so it was two cups of sugar, a half a cup of corn syrup, white corn syrup, and a half a cup of water. So I'm gonna bring it to a boil and let it get to 300 degrees temperature. And you will see on there where it says hard crack. That is what I'm going for. Uh, it's pretty time consuming. So last time it took like 45 minutes. 
to get to the burnt stage so don't do that so <laughs> uh, so just kind of stick with it but this will eventually come to a boil and then once it gets to that 300 degree temperature it should be ready for the strawberries to be dipped all right so this is status update we are now up to almost the soft ball stage so this would like if you were going to make caramel or something like that that's probably about the temperature i think you get to it but we are going further than that we are still looking for that 300 temperature all right so we are officially at 300 so what i've done is i've turned off the eye so I'm going to work kind of quickly, but I'm going to, I've already got my strawberries, my parchment paper prepped, my sesame seeds. So this will be a very quick process. And so I'm gonna set the phone down so that way you can see what I'm doing. All right, so I'm gonna move kind of quickly, but what I've got is my strawberry on a little skewer. Talked about before that it was like a medium sized skewer, so it's not that long. And then I'm going to essentially just dip it, let it drip for a few minutes, place it on the parchment, sprinkle it with the sesame seed. It should, hopefully, work out pretty good. All right, so here is the finished product. Now this will solidify really quickly like they're pretty much already ready to be handled and you'll see the little strings that's <laughs> that's how quickly the sugar hardens Ooh, it's sticking so you want to move very very quickly when you make these otherwise your sugar will harden this will make a lot of strawberries if you use that ratio for sugar. Uh, I just didn't want to prep all of those strawberries and it's just me and my husband so this is all that I wanted to make. But it should be pretty delicious. Alright, so we're going to taste test one of the candied strawberries and see how I did to see if they are like the originals. The big bite. <laughs> That's really good. Yeah, it's not quite dizzy, but it's really good because you get the soft of the strawberry and then the crunch of the candy coating. So if you like candied apples, I definitely suggest this, especially if you can get local strawberries. Mm. It's a little time consuming, a little bit of a headache, but it's totally worth it. All right, so there you have it. That's our latest Disney DIY, Disney at Home, of the candied strawberries that you can no longer find at the Epcot Flower and Garden Festival. So uh, if you want to make it in your home, there you go. Um, it is totally worth it. If you have any other suggestions for videos for in the future of any Disney at Home, Disney DIY recipes, leave them in the comments. Uh, please like and subscribe if you haven't already, and we'll see you next time.